All right, welcome back. PF Sense Part Two. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Let me open up PF Sense. You'll notice that I have nothing up and going. I've decided, kind of in the back of my mind, that I'm going to switch out my IP addressing a little bit uh, to be more in line with an enterprise network. Now, usually 192 networks are residential. Uh, and so I think I'm going to go with a 172 as opposed to a 192. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so you can see here that we've got our DHCP operating on 10.0.2. And my current uh, LAN is on 192.168. We're going to turn that into a 172. So we're just going to do a option 2. Option 2. Followed by another option 2. We're going to put 172.16.1.1 with a 24 slider. We're going to enter, enter again. We're going to go ahead and use DHCP. Uh, and then starting address 172.16.1. And I'm going to start with 10. That will allow me to do static IP addresses for the lower part of that. And then I'm going to stop at one, uh, 250. So 172.16.1. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to do 240. 240 is more than enough. Uh, for DHCP, especially for a, a low-level um, uh, home lab. So we'll hit enter. That's going to put it into the 172 range. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start my Kali. Now, Kali should automatically uh, detect PF sense going in there uh, with DHCP and set it up accordingly to where we're on that 172 network. Um, I have seen in the past where it doesn't, and you kind of have to go in there and reset your IP addresses. Uh, you basically just go in and you, you turn it off. So you do an IF config uh, ETH1 down, and then IF config ETH1 uh, up, and then ETH is, I'll show you on the IF config. Uh, and you kind of have to finagle with it. When it doesn't want to work, it's going to sit there and, and be mean to you, and you're going to want to pull your hair out, which is why I'm so bald. But um, it's not it's not the difficult you just have to kind of force it into it so hopefully we don't have to deal with that today but if we do we'll we'll walk through it and go through there but it can be stubborn at times so let me open up the terminal and just close that out and we're gonna do an IF config and we are on 172 so it took it's on 172.16.1.10 so we didn't have to mess around with that we're just going to ping 172.16.1.1 i want to make sure that it actually pings it does so we should have access to the firewall i'm going to go back into the firewall and we're going to do 172.16.1.1 All right, here we go. We're in the system now. Go ahead and press accept. Close. Okay. So we're in there now, uh, and we should have internet. Let me prove that. So google.com should bring it up. So we have internet. We have our access there. Uh, so we're going to go to assignments. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a VLAN. So we, we have this set up properly. Uh, we're going to add a VLAN, so we're going to do add. It's going to ask us which uh, assets we want. We actually want to create a new one. So I'm going to exit out of this. We're going to minimize this, and we're going to go back into our firewall. And you can see that we only have EM1 and EM0. We're going to add a third interface into this. So we're going to shut this down. So option 6, and it says, do you want to proceed? We do. It's going to system. It's going to shut down, and you don't want to just turn it off willy nilly. You don't want to just press the X and then turn it off. You want to do it the right way, which is halt system, and then let it do its thing. Okay. All right. So it shut down. Let's go into settings. We're going to go back into network. We're going to go to adapter three. We're going to enable the network, and we're going to change it to internal network. So internal, right there. We're going to press OK. We're going to restart it. Um, now, if you're on a VMware, you can you don't really have to bring up the third interface, right? But with VirtualBox, you kind of have to. Um, there are ways around it, uh, but they're, from what I've seen, they're more trouble than what they're actually worth. 
So as long as PFSense picks up the, the third interface, we'll be good to go. All right, so we've added the extra interface right in there. Now we're gonna do this on the web interface because it makes it a little bit easier on here. So we're gonna go to the GUI, we'll log in. We're gonna go to, oops. We're gonna go to interfaces, assignments, and you can see we've got the interfaces here. We're gonna add an interface. So we're gonna add, it says option one, you'll see EM2 there. EM2 is the newest and greatest. We're gonna go to VLANs. We're gonna add a VLAN in there. We're gonna do EM2, option one. We get to give it a VLAN ID, tag. We're gonna do 100. Don't worry about the priority. We're gonna name it DMZ because we're gonna put our servers on there. And I'm actually gonna do, you can see that I've done this before. We're gonna do VLAN-100 DMZ. We're gonna save that. It's in there now. We're gonna go back to inter, uh, uh, interface assignments. Okay, so we have option one, link to EM2. We're gonna click on option one. We're gonna enable it. We're gonna change it from option one to DMZ. DMZ. Uh, IPv4, I'm gonna do static IPv4 addressing, none for any of that. We're gonna drop down to here where our IPv4 address is. We're gonna put 172.16.100.1. And we need a 24 CIDR on that so that it's the last octet. And then we're gonna hit save. We're gonna apply changes. And those changes should be there. Let me go back to assignments and we have a good uh, IPv4 going on with the DMZ and everything else. All right, the next thing we need to do is go to DHCP. Uh, so services, DHPC, DHCP server. We need to make sure that it's enabled. We're gonna go to DMZ, it's not enabled. We're gonna enable that. We're gonna allow all clients. And then here we're gonna set up our range, right? So just like before, 172.16.100.10, and we're gonna end at 172.16.100.240. Make sure those IPs are correct, we're good to go. Then we're gonna drop down, we're gonna save it. It's all, it's saved, so we've got our aspect there. Now we need to do, we need to put our windows in there. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, VirtualBox, I'm gonna go into settings for Windows Server 2019. Now this 2019B is just a direct clone of Windows 2019A, which is over here, which I didn't bother to rename, uh, but there's nothing on there, right? It's just a blank server, it's brand new. We talked about making this into a real web server, which I'm gonna do at some point in time, but for right now, we're gonna put it on that internal network, and you can see that I've already kind of messed around with it a little bit, because uh, I don't like to come into a lab without knowing what I'm talking about. So. You're gonna enable adapter one, but we're gonna put it on that internal network, right? So once you put that uh, Windows Server settings, network, internal network, adapter one, if you go back to our PF Sense and we go to settings, that adapter three is on internal network. So we're gonna be on the same network, all right? And then we're gonna start up that Windows Server system on the back end. Now, if everything's set up correctly, it should come back because of DHCP uh, automatically on that IP address. And then I believe that we have the echo set up to return, but not to actually hit something on the on the outside of it, it's just on the internal, which means we won't be able to actually ping from the Windows server, but we should be able to ping the Windows server, if that makes any sense. Um, and we could set up that rule in the firewall a little bit later if we wanted to. But for today, I think I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Uh, we'll jump in, we'll open up command prompt, we'll get the IP address. Uh, and then we'll try to ping it from our Kali box uh, moving forward. And we'll test it from the Windows Fire, or excuse me, from the PFSense firewall first to make sure we can actually ping it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and capture. If you wanna get past this screen, remember it's gonna be the right control key with the delete button. We'll get us in access. And then I believe we made the password capital T O O R one, two, three. Uh, fat fingered that sucker, one, two, three, exclamation mark. I may have fat fingered it again. Doesn't look like it, that's good. And then to get out, we just hit that control button again and it'll let us out. But today we're just gonna continue on. We're gonna go to that standing right there. We're gonna do a CMD to get to the command prompt. 
And the Windows Server is always a little bit laggy. I mean, it's only got two cores associated with it, which probably isn't enough, but that's okay. We're gonna hit that command prompt. We're gonna do an IP config, IP config, and we're on 172.16.100.10. Now, if I try to ping something with it, I believe we have the echo turned off, so it's not gonna provide me with anything. It should be able to ping .1. But it's just going to get hung up, which is fine. We'll just press Control C. That'll clear that. Let's go into our Kali box. Let's actually go into our firewall first. So we'll go into PFSense, hit Enter. We're going to ping it. So 7 ping host, and then 172.16. Man, I hate that it turns off my numlock. 172.16.100.10. And you can see that it's pinging, so it is good to go. So let's go back to our Kali box. Cali, right? Nope, that's Windows. Cal, my gosh, I can't not click today. So let's open up a terminal. And let me blow this up a little bit. We're going to ping it. So ping 172.16.16.100.10. And it's ping, so it's able to hit it. So we're good to go on that side. But I really don't want my DMZ to be able to ping my LAN. I want it to be separated, right? I want that segmentation for network security. So we need to create a firewall rule. You'll notice that we have LAN floating, LAN and DMZ. We're going to do a LAN rule. We have our three rules, which is allow any any on IPv6 and IPv4. I'm going to get rid of this default IPv6. I'm just going to delete that. Yes, I'm sure, because my network's only in IPv4. I don't like extra rules in there. Now, you'll notice that I've got Apply Changes. In order for anything to take effect, I have to hit that Apply Changes button. Otherwise, it doesn't take effect. Um, but I'm going to add a rule. Now, firewalls go on rules from top to bottom. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to do an Add Rule with the bottom arrow. So the Add at the bottom of the list. I'm going to do a Block. Interface is going to be LAN. I'm going to do IPv4 and IPv6. We're going to do Any, which means I don't want my DMZ and my LAN to touch each other. I want complete segmentation between them. So my source is going to be from the LAN net to the DMZ net. They're not going to be able to talk to one another and I'm going to save. Now you'll have to, you'll notice that the rules at the very bottom, I'm going to apply changes, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to try and re-ping the 172 and you'll notice that it's going off without a hitch. It's still pinging, right? And the reason is, is because that rule's at the very bottom. So this allow all, even though I blocked it, is after the allow all rule. So I need to move that up. I'm just gonna drag it. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna apply changes. And now I shouldn't be able to ping it. And you'll see that it's just getting hung up. It's not actually able to talk to it anymore, okay? So we've completely segmented our DMZ net from our LAN net. They're two completely separate networks. They shouldn't be able to talk to one another at all, which is exactly what we want. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to stop ourselves. We're going to block a domain. So let's block a website today. Let's block uh, Amazon. Let's block Amazon.com. Right now I can go to Amazon. Uh, it should pop up here in just a second. It's thinking about it. Amazon's got a lot of stuff apparently. So Amazon comes up just fine, but I want to block that. Let's go into our PFSense. We're going to go to uh, Services, DNS Resolver, right here under Services. We're going to block. And you can see where it says Enable DNS Resolver. We're going to go all the way to the bottom, all the way bottom, see where it says Domain Overrides. We're going to do an Add. We're going to block Amazon.com. We're going to send it to 127.0.0.1. So it's going to send it back to a loopback address. And we're going to just say block Amazon as our uh, rule. We're going to save it. We're going to apply changes. It's going to take a second while it, while it figures out what it's doing. Now, if you try to just refresh it right now, it's going to come back up because it's got a history, right? So we're going to go into settings. We're going to go into history, history, his, there we go. We're going to clear our history right here. So we're going to clear everything in the last hour. We're going to clear site settings and offline website data. I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to go to someplace else. Let's go to Google first. And then let's go back to Amazon.com. 
and it should block it and send it back to that loopback address and give us an error. And you can see here that we're having that error uh, because it's not going to let us hit Amazon anymore. Okay. All right. So we blocked a DNS. We are assuming on a DNS. We blocked a domain and we blocked and segmented our two networks. That's it for today. Not too shabby for PFSense. Uh, I think next we're going to work on. <coughs> I think we're going to work on Sorcata. Uh, we may we may work on a server. I haven't decided yet. But until next time, thank you everyone for joining me today. As always, please like, subscribe, and hit that alert button. Thank you all.